we have engaged in the epic reading of the book of Job, 42 chapters, the bulk of which is made up of speeches by Job and his three friends. Job, as he describes the suffering that he is going through, and maintains that he does not deserve this, it is not a consequence of his wrongdoing. And his three friends, who try to defend the justice of God, and say, but God is not unjust, you must have done something wrong for him to bring this upon you. In the end, we will find that Job is justified, and he prays for his friends that they might be forgiven. For God is greater than our understanding. As Isaiah would say, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. Both Christians and non-Christians are affected by depression. Even some pastors who have established churches and have a high standing have committed suicide. And this leaves their sheep floundering in thinking, how could that be? Well, we have a very strong enemy, Satan, who brings lies to our thinking, lies to our thoughts, often by the words of people who we respect, who have standing and reputation among us. Job's three friends are not foolish people, men that Job himself would respect, and they respected Job. But on this very complex issue of why is Job suffering, their knowledge is incomplete and their conclusion is wrong. Job at this stage can't see what's going on in heaven. He can just suddenly experience the loss of all his possessions, the loss of his children, the loss of his health, for no explicable reason. So Job has cursed the day of his birth and asked why do people suffer such? And noted that in death, whether people are rich or poor, they are all equal. Aliphaz, taking his stand on visions and dreams and declaring the justice of God, has a simple answer for Job. Job, God is good, and if you just pray to him and confess your sin, he will forgive you and everything will be restored to what it was before. For God doesn't do this kind of thing unless there is a reason for it. You must have done something wrong. He can't point to what Job has done wrong because Job has done nothing wrong. And in chapter 6, Job responds, Oh, that my grief were fully weighed and my calamity laid with it on the scales. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. My spirit drinks in their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when it has grass? Or does the ox low over its fodder? Can flavourless food be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? My soul refuses to touch them. They are loathsome food to me. Oh, that I might have my request, that God would grant me the thing that I long for, that it would please God to crush me, that he would loose his hand and cut me off. Then I would still have comfort, though in anguish I would exult. He will not spare, for I have not concealed my words to the Holy One. What strength do I have that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh bronze? Is my help not within me? And is success driven from me? To him who is afflicted, kindness should be shown by his friend, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brothers have dealt deceitfully like a brook, like the streams of the brooks that pass away, which are dark because of the ice, and into which the snow vanishes. When it is warm, they cease to flow. When it is hot, they vanish from their place. The paths of their way turn aside. They go nowhere and perish. The caravans of Tima look. The travellers of Sheba hope for them. They are disappointed because they are confident. They come there and are confused. 
for now you are nothing. You see terror and are afraid. Did I ever say, bring something to me, or offer a bribe for me from your wealth, or deliver me from the enemy's hands, or redeem me from the hand of oppressors? Teach me that I may hold my tongue, cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forceful are right words! But what does your arguing prove? Do you intend to rebuke my words and the speeches of a desperate one, which are as wind? Yes, you overwhelm the fatherless, and you undermine your friend. Now therefore be pleased to look at me, for I would never lie to your face. Yield now, let there be no injustice. Yes, concede my righteousness still stands. Is there injustice on my tongue? Cannot my taste discern the unsavoury? My name's Arthur, and thank you for joining me as we share together from Job chapter 6. This speech continues into the next chapter, but let's review what he is saying. They have accused him of sin. He begins by talking about the depth of his anguish. Oh, that my grief were fully weighed. He's asking his friends to understand just the agony that he is in. The arrows of the Almighty are within me. My spirit drinks in their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. So, again, he is acknowledging that all that has happened to him has come from God. Even though we know it was administered by Satan, it was permitted by God. But don't think it's light. It's God who is afflicting him, not just men. And what he wants from God is that this suffering should cease, that God would grant his wish and crush him, take away his life. But he is open before God. He has not done anything secret. And he has no strength to save himself. Therefore his trust must be in God. But what about them? He reprimands his friends. For they condemn him, although they cannot point to the thing that he has done wrong. I'm reminded of an incident when Jesus was brought before the high priest who asked him about his disciples and his doctrine. And Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where the Jews always meet, and in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? So Job is saying to these men, If I've done something wrong, tell me what it is. Have I ever taken advantage of you? Have I asked for any gifts or bribes? Have I asked you to intercede for me against my enemy or to act on my behalf against oppressors? Tell me, show me what I've done wrong so that I can understand my mistake. But if you just argue that I must be wrong because this has happened to me, what does that prove? It doesn't help me. It doesn't prove anything at all. And he has this beautiful picture of a stream flowing down from the lofty peaks. When the ice melts, the brooks are full of water. But as the weather warms up, the brooks dry up. And in the heat of summer, there is no water there at all. They should be coming to him as one who is reliable, who sustains their friend in the good times and in the bad times. To him who is afflicted, Kindness should be shown by his friend, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. This shows an attitude that we should have, that we do not give up on people when they are in trouble. Judgment belongs to Jesus. Condemnation belongs to him. He is the judge of all the earth. We don't have to judge. We are there to support. And that is what we should do when we encounter people who are in great distress, and not just be a fair-weather 
friend.